What's up guys, welcome back to this series on reinforcement learning. In this video, we'll write the code to enable us to watch our trained Q learning agent play the game Frozen Lake. So let's get to it. Last time, we left off having just finished training our Q learning agent to play Frozen Lake. We trained it for 10,000 episodes, and now it's time to see our agent on the ice in action. This block of code is going to allow us to watch our trained agent play Frozen Lake using the knowledge it's gained from the training we completed in the previous video. We're going to watch the agent play three episodes in total. Let's look at the start of this outer loop first. For each of the three episodes, we first reset the state of our environment and set done to false. This variable is used for the same purpose as we saw in our training loop last time. It just keeps track of whether or not our last action ended the episode. We then just print to the console what episode we're starting with and then sleep for one second so that we have time to actually read that printout before it disappears from the screen. Now we'll move on to the inner loop. For each time step within an episode, we're calling the IPython display function clear output, which clears the output from the current cell in the Jupyter Notebook. With wait equals true, it waits to clear the output until there's another printout to overwrite it. This is all just done so that the notebook and the screen display remain smooth as we watch our agent play. We then call render on our env object, which will render the current state of the environment to the display so that we can actually visually see the game grid and where exactly our agent is on the grid. We then sleep again for 300 milliseconds to give us time to actually see the current state of the environment on screen before moving on to the next time step. Don't worry, this will all come together and materialize once we view the final product. We then set our action to be the action that has the highest Q value from the Q table for our current state, and we then take that action with env.step, just like we saw during training. This will update our new state, the reward for our action, and whether or not the action completed the episode. If our current action did end the episode, then we render the environment to see where the agent ended up from our last time step. If the reward for the agent was a 1, then we know that the episode ended because the agent reached the frisbee and won the game. So we print that info to the console. If the reward wasn't a 1, then we know that it was alternatively a 0 and that the agent fell through a hole. After seeing how the episode ended, we then start a new episode. Now, if the last action didn't complete the episode, then we skip over the conditional, transition to the new state, and move on to the next time step. After all three episodes are done, we then close the environment and that's it. All right, now let's get ready to execute this code. Here's what we can expect to happen. We'll have our grid printed to the screen. The agent will start in the starting state in the top left corner of the grid, and we'll be able to see the actions chosen by the agent displayed above the grid at each time step. We'll also see the agent move around the grid as indicated with a red marker. Oh, also, remember this part from the description of Frozen Lake a couple videos back? However, the ice is slippery, so you won't always move in the direction you intend. Well, keep that in mind when we watch the agent play. We'll see that sometimes when the agent chooses to go one way, it will actually instead go another way because of the slippery ice. For example, in real life, you can imagine if you were on a frozen lake and you tried to navigate left, that you may actually slip a little and move more up than you do to the left. So that's worth the mention since you'll see this as the agent plays. All right, let's watch. Alright, that's it. Pretty sweet for our first implementation of reinforcement learning and code, right? 
If you were able to follow along with the code for this entire implementation of Frozen Lake, then you should definitely feel good and give yourself a pat on the back. We'll continue to get exposure to more difficult and sophisticated games as we progress deeper into reinforcement learning. So if you thought playing Frozen Lake was cool, you'll definitely want to stick around. In the next video, we're going to become enlightened on how this Q-learning algorithm that uses value iteration, like what we use for Frozen Lake, may not be the absolute best approach, especially when we're dealing in very large state spaces. There, we'll see what we can do to make some huge efficiency advances. Hmm, I wonder if neural networks might start to show up sometime soon. Are you able to see where they might be able to fit in in the scheme of what we've learned so far? Let me know any and all of your ideas in the comments. Also, leave a thumbs up to let us know you're learning, and don't forget to check out the corresponding blog for this video on deepblizzard.com, as well as the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind for exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence, and I'll see you in the next one. Of course, it's already here. We already have a AI, and, and often it works in the background, the back offices of hospitals where it's used to diagnose x-rays better than a human doctor. It's in legal offices where it's used to go through legal evidence better than a human power lawyer. It's used to fly the plane that you came here with. Human pilots only flew it seven to eight minutes. The rest of the time, AI was driving. And of course, in Netflix and Amazon, it's in the background making those recommendations. That's what we have today. And we have an example, of course, in a more front-facing aspect of it with the win of the AlphaGo, who beat the world's greatest Go champion. But it's more than that. If you play a video game, you're playing against an AI. But recently, Google taught that AI, an AI, their AI, to actually learn how to play video games. Again, teaching video games was, was already done, but learning how to play a video game is another step. That's artificial smartness. And what we're doing is, is we're taking this artificial smartness and we're making it smarter and smarter.